What is a resilient person? What sets apart someone who can easily adapt to change to all of the challenges that come up versus someone who may get a lot more stressed out or feels overwhelmed, uh, isolated or alone? That's what I want to get into today to break down what are those key skills, those key traits that you can develop to grow your resilience. I'm Ravi Tangri, and this is the Soul Engineering series. And this is about how do you bring your heart and soul into all of your work, your home, your community, every single part of your life. Each video is designed to help you um, become more efficient at bringing your heart and soul into all that you do. And thank you all for your shared comments and sharing the videos. Really appreciate you getting the word out there and your comments. Please keep those comments coming and uh, make sure you give me the feedback so that I can keep bringing you exactly the resources that you need. And make sure you subscribe so that you can get these videos as soon as they're out. So what is a resilient person? There are some very key characteristics that um, build up resilience and make up resilience that I want to go through. These are things that you can develop, you can grow. You may be stronger at some, not as good as others. Um, you can develop them all. I believe in a strengths-based approach, so you should, I believe, build on those that you're already good at reinforce them and then with the others start to develop them one or two at a time don't try to do it all this is a life journey okay so that's what we're going to get down to now again resilience i've said before comes down to one thing that i have found what's called personal power which is your perceived sense of control over yourself and what's happening around you. And the higher you have that perceived sense of control, remember perception is the key, it's not a hard and fast absolute reality. Because two people in the same situation may have very different senses of personal power and they are affected differently by the same events. So it's that sense that you have more control over yourself and what's happening around you uh, that builds your resilience. And there's some key uh, elements. There are some key traits to this that we are going to get into now. So one of the first things that contributes to resilience uh, is uh, physical activity. You know, this is something that really helps you uh, in terms of moving forward, the more you move, the more your body has the strength to be able to deal with what's coming. Self-awareness is another thing. Do you invest time to start to be aware of, you know, what are your strengths? What are your challenges? Perhaps what are your blind spots? Working on that, the higher you can be in terms of your self-awareness and understanding of where you are with these skills, for example, is a key element of self-awareness. Uh, the more objectively you can evaluate yourself, the more effective you're going to be at identifying what will be able to move you forward. Another thing that contributes to resilience is uh, emotional reg regulation. So when stuff happens, do you blow your top? Do you really lose it? Or are you able to, okay, whew, this is not the appropriate time to do this. You've seen this, I'm sure, especially with the challenges of the last few years and all the things people have had to deal with that a lot more people are hitting their breaking point and the emotions are, are taking off all over the place. So 
This is a critical uh, skill to develop. And a lot of these other things help contribute to your ability to be able to regulate the emotions, what's appropriate in this context. And not, it's not about burying them. It's about being able to understand them, work through them, but not lose control to them. Another key element of uh, resilience, one of the key traits, is self-care. How much time do you invest to look after you? You know, we all look after everybody else. Everyone else is counting on us. And we do these things for them. But how much do you invest in you? What I found is people, especially people who are often in leadership roles, put themselves last because they are looking after others in their life, whether it's at work or at home or in the community. But if you don't fill the well with yourself, you've got nothing to give. Plus, you're modeling what's required, which is about looking after yourself, not just pushing yourself to a breaking point. Now, another key element of uh, resilience is social support and connection. It can be very hard when you're under pressure to deal with things if you're isolated, and yet people can tend to isolate themselves when they are under pressure. One of the things that happened during the pandemic with lockdowns is we did isolate ourselves. We had to. And that created you know, all sorts of gaps in what we're used to. So how can you reach out, even if not physically, by phone, by video, whatever, to be able to connect with people, get support as you move forward? Another skill that contributes to resilience is problem-solving skills. So if you've got to cope and deal with different new situations you've got to be able to think through not just doing the way it's always been done which is probably not going to work in you know big change situations but figuring out what will work what could i do so how can you build your ability to be able to problem solve these situations uh, that, that you may not know anything about okay so how do you work through that Related to that is having a solution focus, not just focusing, oh, problems, 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 but to really be able to think from the mindset of, you know, problems are just steps towards a solution. They are just building blocks to move forward, knowing that you are uh, solution focused, that you can um, build a solution to move forward, knowing that there is a solution, even if you don't know what it is. I mean, that's been, you know, for 30 years in my working or organizational change, I generally have no clue what the solution is going to be. And I'm not the one that creates it. My clients are. I'm the one that facilitates that process. But I go in with an absolute 100% certainty that we will find a solution. Don't know what it is, but I know we'll find it. And we have every single time. And it's not me, it's them. But I believed it strongly enough that they came along for the ride. So to believe that you can find a solution. And you can look back in your life at the things you've already overcome. And, um, and see that as a track record for moving forward. And the final thing on my list of some of the key traits that contribute to resilience and personal power is an interesting thing. It's, it's a balance between uh, optimism and realism. Uh, realism in that you've got to be realistic about where you are. You can't maybe set goals, the same goals you had before these changes that, you know, really, let's be realistic. Is this doable? in these new circumstances. Maybe not. Let's set something there. But not to just dumb down everything you do to, to a bare minimum. To still push, but within realistic parameters based on resources that are there. Same about if you're working with people. Not to push beyond what they can. 
the balancing part of that with the optimism is trusting that you're going to get through this. This is sort of linked to the solution focus, but really, really knowing you're going to get through and to have that optimistic perspective. So these are lifetime journeys uh, to develop all of these traits. It's not something that you're going to get, boom, I'm done, I'm good. You always can get better and better and better. The thing is, though, once you build a certain amount of strength, does this mean, okay, I'm good, I can't be shaken, I can get through whatever hits me? No, absolutely not. What it does not mean is that you don't get stressed or that you don't get knocked off your feet. Stuff's going to happen. I've seen through the challenging times that we've had, even the toughest people get knocked off their feet. That's part of it. What resilience is about is how quickly can you recover? How quickly can you recuperate? Not to where you were before, but what they've talked about, a new normal, a new way of doing things that adapts to what's, what's changed in your world. So it's not about never ever having to fall apart or get stressed. Resilient people are focused on, you know, how do I recuperate? How do I continually get better and, 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 and move forward? Um, and, it, and as I say, it's an ongoing journey. To me, this is a life journey to build these skills to move forward. Now, one resource I want to give you that right now, this February, if you want to, if you're ready to really start to ramp up your resilience, I'm bringing out a free seven day challenge called Ramp Up Your Resilience, where each day I'm going to give you a key nugget that's a, that's a major step in building your resilience so that you can build those habits to move forward. Uh, please Join me, register right now at rampupresilience.com and register for free. Please feel free to pass this around and join me for the Ramp Up Resilience Challenge. It's going to be a blast.